you know, over the last five years, I've just had to deal and learn anger management, you know, and that kind of how do I take the anger I am feeling at the injustice that I see happening and channel it to something productive to keep doing our jobs. So, you know, thank you. Thank you for helping us shine the light. Thank you for giving us energy. Uh, you know, I tweeted just uh, earlier today. I actually think I haven't done anything differently in the last 35 years. I've been a journalist. The conditions have changed. And I think that the prize is more a reflection of, um, of the way the global community looks at this government, at my government today, and how much more journalists have to sacrifice to be able to do our jobs. I think we start with taking the laws that already exist in the real world and making sure they're implemented in the virtual world. I think we start with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, if, if we go to this rather than what has been pulled together in kind of a, a hodgepodge manner, the whack-a-mole way that, that we have been attacking um, user safety, consumer safety, journalist safety, right? Look for Looking for systemic solutions is, is the right way. This isn't a freedom of speech issue. Uh, what we're looking at is the kind of incentive schemes that are in place and how they are gained by power and money. I mean, make no mistakes, this is about power and money. And I guess the last thing, you know, Guy, I have to thank UNESCO because when it all began, when all the attacks began in 2016, um, imagine doing a series on the weaponization of the internet and then getting pounded with on a per hour basis, 90 hate messages per hour. I, I was, you saw me, I remember having dinner in a World Press Freedom Conference together. And it was you and Julie who convinced me to, that it wasn't my fault. That's the first part. Women will think, journalists will think it's our fault first. I think that makes you a good journalist because you sit and you take, you think maybe it's the, it's constructive criticism, but in the end, it wasn't. It's meant to pound you to silence. It's meant to manufacture consensus. And you convince me to speak. That's a scary thing. And you put it in a book, in a UNESCO book. So thank you. Thank you. I don't, so no, I don't think it is out of the scope of law. What is out of the scope right now is the technology. And I think that's what we need to look at the design and the algorithms that are insidiously manipulating us. Shoshana Zuboff, the Harvard Emeritus professor, uh, wrote a book called Surveillance Capitalism, how the business model actually incentivizes, and all the research has already shown that on social media, the, the main platforms that deliver news, right? that lies laced with anger and hate spread faster and further than facts. You could argue that, you know, without facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, you can't have trust. Without trust, you can't do anything. You can't have democracy. You can't fight climate change. You can't fight coronavirus, right? Without trust, you break humanity. So this is, uh, the, what do we need to do? Like with CRISPR technology, which is about our genetics, because the science is so much more potent than our human ability to absorb information, than our human ability when we are targeted for our psychological weaknesses. This is not something that is rational. The platforms that deliver facts supposedly are acting on a, if the two systems of thinking, it's thinking fast, it's, it's manipulating our emotions. Journalism and facts is a thinking slow process. So we need to address that. I'm a big fan of, of looking at all of this, putting regulations in place because the, the main casualty is trust. And without trust, uh, you heard this from me, you also heard it. I mean, without trust, we can't do anything. And I think this is the year to do something about this. Last thing is, on um, one of the things you said is, uh, look, I think that the platforms, the social media platforms, and let me turn positive. You know, what they've actually shown us is that humanity globally, even as the, the information operations are trying to pound open the fissure lines of our societies, um, the social media platforms show us that humanity, we all have far more in common across countries than we have differences because they're working on our biology. 
So that's that's a that's a plus side. Now we need to catch up and put guardrails on power and money. We got to stop the impunity. 